Hi, everybody. I know there's uh, not enough seats for everyone. I appreciate your uh, understanding. Um, we're going to leave those doors open. So if you can find somewhere you can see in here, that's great. So I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, my name is Acting Mayor uh, Mitch Vick. I'd like to recognize that we meet on the traditional territory of the Lataco Dene. Before I uh, talk to the agenda, uh, Mayor Ron Paul would like to say a word. Yes, thank you, Acting Mayor uh, Vic. We have agreed that it would be best for all of us that I yield the chair to you as Acting Mayor to remove any question, real or perceived, that I may be using my position and my authority as mayor and as chair to influence the scope and flow of the important discussion that will take place here today. Thank you, Acting Mayor Vic. Your kind gesture is much needed and even much more appreciated. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so the agenda is gonna, I'm gonna propose a few amendments to the agenda. First, I'm gonna um, suggest that items I through M, and on your agenda those comprise committee reports, etc. I'm gonna propose that we stand those down until our next council meeting. The reason being is uh, I think it's appropriate we leave sufficient time to hear from uh, our gallery. Um, regarding um, unfinished business, so that's on your agenda, that's H. I'm going to propose that we move um, letters one through four, and we're going to move those to new business, as uh, they don't quite fit the definition of unfinished business, and there is new, new material within those letters. So with those two recommendations of the agenda, I would need someone to make that motion. Okay. Mayor Paul, Councillor Elliott, any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So we're going to proceed with the modified agenda. Regarding the unfinished business, um, which we are moving those items now to new business, it's a follow-up from our meeting on March 19th where we uh, uh, d discussed a letter from the Quinell Lataco Dene Nation. So we're gonna move right to new business, and we're gonna... Mr. Chair, um, can we uh, check out uh, the minutes? Yeah, from the last one, please. I'm going too quick. All right, so uh, first, I need an adoption of the minutes from March 19th. So moved. So moved. Can I have a comment, Mr. Chair? Yep. Second, Councillor McKelvey. Councillor Elliott, you had a question on the minutes? I do, and then a uh, comment with your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Okay. If we go to page eight of 36 on the minutes from the last meeting, it states, when asked directly, and this was a question from me, when asked directly if he, the mayor, agreed with what his wife has been doing in the community, Mayor Paul stated no. Since this point in time, it has come to our attention that Mayor Paul himself has been handing out these books to individuals. So that is not a factual statement. I appreciate, I appreciate the, the concern. Please let us continue. So I will move on to, please, I would like to thank everyone in the gallery for being in council chambers this evening for possibly the most important meeting that we have ever had. I would especially like to welcome all of our Indigenous chiefs, elders, community members. Welcome to you all. I'd like to recognize that we are meeting on Lataco Dene traditional territory. We say that at the beginning of every meeting, but it feels to me that some just don't appreciate those words. This means that it is unceded territory, that this land was taken, it was not given. Mr. Mayor, our country and this community have been working to rebuild relationships with the Indigenous peoples. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission was formed in Canada to find actual facts surrounding the residential schools and the atrocities that took place. 
there were five million different pieces of information gathered and out of those five million came 94 calls to action. Mr. Mayor, these are facts. This is all in an attempt to try and move our country forward. That is exactly what we have been trying to do in our community as well. Mr. Mayor, I hope you understand that the First Nations in our community are our biggest partners and there will be no real movement forward in our city and surrounding area without that partnership. And with that partnership, there has to be trust. What has been taking place recently with the handing out of this de denialist literature has not built partnerships, but is an attempt to destroy them. We've had, we've just had the first partnership between a First Nation and a city to host, host a BC Winter Games. Immediately after that, we've had to deal with the fallout of these books of denialism and hate being handed out. And a direct consequence of the action spreading these books in our community is that Lataco Dene Nation has said they will no longer conduct business with us if you are at the table. I wonder if this... I have to wonder if this was the intention all along. Why appoint a First Nations liaison in the first place? This should obviously be the role of the mayor. I asked you specifically in the last meeting if you agreed with the actions of your wife as taken in the community by giving out these books, and you said no. Then you proceeded to explain all the good things that you've done. In fact, none of the accomplishments were started in your term of office besides assigning a liaison. <laughs> Now, it has come to light that you yourself have been handing out these books to people. Shame. Mr. Mayor, you lied to me, to Council, our First Nations, our community, and in fact, the nation. Mr. Mayor, you have lost the trust of our First Nations, myself, and the vast majority of our community. It is time for true reconciliation. It is time to repair our partnerships and stop the hate. Mr. Mayor, I have no choice but to ask for your official resignation from office as mayor so we can repair the damage done by you and your wife. Point Respectfully, Councillor, um, we're here, we're gathered here to listen to the, to the concerns of our gathered guests. That question should be brought to another meeting. No. Questions on the minutes from other councillors? Councillor Rudenberg, then Councillor Runge. So thank you. Um, I too want to seek some clarification from the minutes um, of our last meeting. Um, Mayor Paul read a statement which he expounded all the great things that we've been doing, the MOU, et cetera, et cetera, and um, asserted that he had not read the book. Uh, to be honest, I have never opened it. I looked at the cover, but I have no interest in looking at it. So as Councillor Elliott has um, said, you, that is a lie. I have permission to use names of two individuals that the mayor decided to try and give a book to at a recent Caribou Regional District Board meeting in Williams Lake. The mayor of Hundred Mile House, Mayor Pinckney, Pinckney, who said his comment to her as he tried to give it to her was that it's always good to have both sides of the story. He also tried to give the book to the chair of the CRD uh, board, Chair Wagner, and when she said no thanks, he told her it was a good read. This is the same mayor who rushed out after the last council meeting to have a chat with a couple of representatives from Lutaco and at some point in the conversation said, but Pat loves all the little Indians. I too would like to call for the resignation of the mayor, but apparently we'll have to do that at a later uh, meeting, but I will be calling for the resignation of the mayor. Council Runge. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a point of order here. I agree, we have a lot of issues on the table here and it's complicated on a number of levels. But might I remind our councillors around the table that you have a responsible conduct as locally uh, elected officials. And I think what we just heard here, even though it may be, va you may feel it's important, is not the place and the way to bring it forward. We, if a local government faces issues related to less than responsible conduct, Government's ability to provide good governance to the community suffers. Disputes among elected officials 
in public like this prior without letting any of the other councillors know feels kind of like it was contrived. Alleged breaches of procedures of rules during meetings or duty to respect the confidentiality seem to be followed at this uh, meeting also. Marginalization of specific council and board members is happening also. And for some of our councillors, inappropriate use of social media to, to hype up things when it's not discussed here at the table has also been a little bit of an issue. So I want to, I want to just, yeah. We need to, we need to, we need to run this meeting with integrity, with respect, with accountability, with leadership and collaboration. We didn't do that for us. That means... Please let us proceed. You will have your opportunity. Please let us proceed. This is our opportunity. That, that means that we do have to listen to our Indigenous communities around our, around Quinnell, and we do have to listen to them, but I'd rather first listen before we come to a decision here at the table right now. I think it's much, much more important that we listen to each other, that we, that we work together to make this a better community. We can cut each other all up right now, but at the end of the day, we need to find healing for everybody. And yes, some things that have been said are inappropriate, and I can't condone them. I was not at the last meeting, so I don't know all the things that were said other than what I saw on the, on the video. But I do think that we have to act as humans and we have to act respectfully with each other. We have to listen to all sides. Maybe not tonight, because it's way too charged. This is not a council meeting right now. Are you, are you finished, Councillor? Um, Mayor Paul. <clears throat> yes, I just would like to respond to, um, to Councillor Elliott about his false allegation that I was handing out the book. What happened, and we've got re regional district director representatives in the gallery today, that we had a discussion at the regional board about some books that were in one of the local libraries. And as we all know, the libraries in the Caribou Regional District are indeed um, operated by the regional district. And there was some discussion going on about some uh, books that were characterized as being um, disturbing, and they were books on soji, uh, which is um, sexual orientation and gender identity in one of the local libraries. And, yes, I agree. And I had a copy of the book just to show them that wouldn't it, what would happen if we tried to get that book into the library. I did not offer it. I was just using it to, sh to, to make a point. I have not distributed that book to anyone. So if you're going to accuse me of a lie, Councillor Elliott, I'm going to fire right back at you because you just lied. Uh, first time speaker, Councillor Goulet. Uh, thank you, Acting Mayor. And thank you all for being here. Fantastic uh, uh, turnout. Thank you. This has been emotional and charged from the last meeting, from March 19th. Excuse me. And you know what? I, I'm looking at it as the position of the mayor. I'm not looking at it as individuals. I'm not looking at it as a book being. I'm looking at it as to what the mayor's responsibility is and what the mayor um, needs to needs to understand. And I, I, I've done empathy, you know. Empathy um, is also within the community charter, you know, that a mayor's ability to understand another person's position and how they are feeling. It is critical skill for interacting with residents to understand their needs and why they're addressing particular issues. The mayor should also demonstrate empathy with fellow politicians in order to find common ground when discussing the political matters at hand. An empathetic mayor may be more capable of serving all of their constituents, not just those who are directly related to, allowing them to be more effective in their role. So I just wanted to, to read that because that is from the Charter. It's not my means, it was done in the Charter in, I believe, 1991. So there's a piece on the empathy and what the mayor uh, uh, duties 
Jesus. I uh, caused controversy, I guess, in my comments from the last meeting, you know, wasn't meaning to, but I thought it was important that I share how my family received the book. Ever since then, you know, it's been a wild ride. The last two weeks have been just crazy, incredible. You know, I've been, I've been called out, I've been asked to, and I'm getting emotional, to tell what our family is, where we came from, what residential school people went to, which is totally not right. It's something that shouldn't be here at this table or even be put into emails to, to us for somebody for saying, hey, I read the book. And yes, I did read the book. I'll be quite honest, from cover to cover. And I gave my opinion on the book and I said it at that meeting, but apparently my speech means nothing. I have no free speech. I can't tell you that the book was not good. It's not a good read. I'll be quite honest with you from an indigenous perspective, but people have their opinions but I got blasted, just blasted in this, in this entire way of doing things, right? So it's not about the book. I think we have to come back to the position of the mayor and how we fix as a council, how we move forward. Ladako today has said at a CKPG interview that the mayor's office, um, they cannot work with. They're looking at working with the council, but not the mayor's office, which brings us to, you know, how do we move forward and how do we do that reconciliation piece? But I just wanted to, to put that out there. Um, I am also, you know, I think it's appropriate to ask for the mayor to resign. I know we can't, we can't, uh, we can't force you. But it's an ask. So thank you. Councillor Ruberg for a second time. Thank you. So, um, Councillor uh, Goulet is quite right. We're not debating the merits of the book. That's long gone. This is now a discussion about how the mayor decided to act once we talked about what his wife was doing with this book. I think when we go back to this whole responsible conduct of elected officials, I think the mayor has forgotten his oath of office that clearly states that he performs his duties respectfully, faithfully, and with integrity. Any more comments on the minutes? I'm not sure if uh, what Councillor Elliott brought up constitutes uh, an omission in the minutes. Um, so I'll call the question on as to accept the minutes as submitted. Councillor Runge will move that. Oh. You'll move that motion, Councillor? Seconder? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? One in favor? Opposed? Favor? I need a show of hands, please. Thank you. That motion passes. Okay, we'll move on to our new business, which is we have four letters submitted to City Council. And I'd ask that uh, for the first letter, which is from the Nazco First Nation, if Rio, you could kindly read that into our record. Letter dated March 20th, 20, 2024 from Nazco First Nation, residential school denial misinformation. We write to your right to you further to the letter council received from Latako La Dene Nation dated March 19th. It should go without saying that Nazco Council and community are extremely disturbed that a book is being distributed in the city that is spreading misinformation and supporting the denial of the negative impacts of residential school system on our elders and community members. We would hope our that such behavior would be strongly, unequivocally, and unanimously condemned by council in an effort to reduce the harm, pain, and re-traumatization that denialism claims cause for our people. We are in full support of Lataco Dene and all the First Nations in seeking transparency and appropriate accountability on this issue. It is critically important to the healing of our communities and this country that the truth about residential schools be understood and that these harms cease to be perpetuated or otherwise repeated. As such, we appreciate the various motions Cornell Council passed in response to Lataco's prompting, and we hope that Mayor and Council will show strong proactive leadership on this matter at every opportunity. In order to further NASCO's relationship with Cornell City Council, we request a meeting with the city leadership at the earliest opportunity in order to discuss how we can further the relationship between the city and Nazco First Nation. Please advise of your earliest availability, available opportunity in coming weeks to meet with our council and senior staff. 
thank you very much. So there is a request embedded in the letter, um, which begs um, some action on our part. I would entertain a motion to request our um, Indigenous liaison, uh, Councilor Rudenberg, to work with staff to coordinate an earliest opportunity to have a meeting with the NASCO Nation. Seconder? Any comments on the uh, motion on the floor? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. We have a second letter, which is number two, which is a press release from the Quinnell Board of Education. Again, Rhea, would you kindly read that into the record? Press re release dated March 21st, Quinnell Board of Education reaffirmed commitment to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. The Quinnell Board of Education and Superintendent confirm receipt of the book titled Grave Error, How Media Misled Us, and the Truth About Residential Schools, and the dis district denounces this book. The written and oral stories of those who have lived through the experience of residential schools are factual and have impacted generations of families in Canada, and specifically in our region. The truth of residential schools impacts all of us, especially those who live and still live these atrocities, which includes generational impacts. We live with the responsibility to show care and compassion and most importantly, to ensure a better future for all our students. The Quinell School District is tasked with the responsibility of teaching children, along with the rest of us, about the atrocities of the past in order to grow and heal. We do this with resources that are vetted for accuracy and integrity by partners such as First Nations Education Steering Committee and our local Aboriginal Education Council. The Board of Education and District Respect and honor the stance of Lataco Dene in denouncing this book. The district stands with Lataco Dene Nation, Nazco First Nation, Luskus Dene Nation, Estila First Nation, Métis Nation, and all Indigenous partners in reaffirming our commitment to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. Thank you. And our third letter is from the North Caribou Métis Association. Dated March 22nd, 2024, this letter is from the North Caribou Métis Association in support of the letter written by Lataco Dene Nation regarding the local distribution of a book written about residential schools entitled Grave Error. This book is written solely to dispel the truth about residential school abuse and traumas affecting the lives of residential school survivors and their families. As Métis people, we had some of our elders residing in residential schools. It is important for all Indigenous people to take a stand so that these, mis these misconceptions stated in this book are not going to be taught to our children in schools. We've all worked so hard with truth and reconciliation and to lose all this progress would be devastating. The truth is that this abuse happened and whether we like it or not, it has shaped our entire country. We are just beginning to heal. It is said it will take at least seven generations. Let's not make it longer by promoting books such as this one. There are books with facts that confirm the abuse suffered and there are documents from some of these schools. We are responsible to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. We urge people who don't believe or, under, or understand to engage and talk to survivors and hear their stories. Check out the facts and documents from the National Archives of Canada, visit the local bands, the North Caribou Métis Office, the Friendship Centre, and make yourself aware of residential school history. Thank you. Our last letter from New Business is from the BCAFN. Dated March 22nd, 2024, British Columbia Associ Assembly of First Nations congratulates City of Quinell and the Taco Dene Nation for leading the way on reconciliation. Platley Tena, the BC Assembly of First Nations, is congratulating the Lataco Dene Nation and the City of Quinell for their work fighting against residential school denialism in Canada. When it came to light that the wife of Quinell's mayor was distributing denialist literature, the Council unanimously denounced the denialist book and supported the findings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Residential schools killed thousands of Indigenous ch children, which is a hard pill to swallow for many non-Indigenous Canadians who continue to believe in national myths of fairness and justice, said Regional Chief. Chief Terry T.G., but the church's own records confirmed thousands of children never went home from these so-called schools. This is part of the history of this country, and denying these facts is extremely harmful to the progress we are making toward reconciliation, he continued. To Kumlips, to Sikwakum, 
first brought forward evidence of unmarked graves at the site of the former Kamloops Indian Residential School in 2021. Since then, First Nations across Canada have found evidence of approximately 1,900 unmarked graves at 16 other former residential schools. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission found evidence of 3,213 deaths of children in residential school records, which they admit is unlikely to be a full accounting due to poor record keeping and many records not surviving. Residential school denialism needs to be called out when we see it. This is not a matter of opinion or free speech. It is hateful, harmful, and cannot be tolerated by Canadian society, said Regional Chief TG. It is incumbent on our allies among non-Indigenous Canadians to speak up when they are confronted by this poison. The BCAFN applauds the work of the Lataco Dene Nation and the City of Quinell in stamping out denialism when confronted by it, he concluded. Denialists often focus on errors in reporting or claim that students benefited from residential schools in an attempt to sow doubt about the reality of the extreme harms committed against ind Indigenous peoples by the residential school system. Survivors' stories, historical records, and the reports of staff at Indian Affairs such as Peter Bryce, all confirm the conclusion of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The residential school system was an attempt at cultural genocide. That this, that this attempt was not successful is a testament to the resilience of Indigenous peoples and the strength of those who were forced to attend these institutions. Thank you. So with those four submissions, uh, are there any questions from council or comments? I see no questions or comments from council. We're now gonna move uh, the correspondence from March 26, 2024, Prospectors Car Club. We will move that to our next council meeting as well. So we move to, um, We'll move right to gallery questions. I'd first like to invite um, the leaders from, if they choose to, they may come and speak on behalf of their communities uh, first. So Estela Nation, Nazco Nation, Kluskas Nation, Lataco Dene, and Nadele, Nadele Nation. I apologize if I've mispronounced that. You have the opportunity to come forward as you are representing multiple members of your community. If you'd like to come ask a question or make a comment, you may do that first. Hold on. Hold on. We look to the elders of this traditional territory first. If I could kindly ask when you come to the mic, if you could tell us your name and the community you're coming from. this is on thank you I uh, just like to thank the council for allowing us uh, this opportunity to speak uh, we've been kind of waiting for this chance to speak to what's been going on a lot of uh, talk as councillor Tony has been a little crazy around the office and there's a lot of questions that have come up and like we're not really interested in answering them. Um, when it comes to the content of that book, there's no point, as you guys mentioned, that's for a separate meeting. Our issue is with the leadership of this town, sending this book out into the public with little notes on the inside. The one that went to the school board said, this is the, what the kids should learn to know the truth. There's something to that effect. And it was a big hint that they wanted it added to the curriculum, which I think is just ridiculous. As a leader in my community, we're very sensitive to what goes on in the community, what things can hurt our people. And this definitely hurts our people, not only just the survivors that have to relive it again, and wounds that have just been healed just a little bit from the, the findings into Kamloops and the Williams Lake First Nation and the other residential schools across Canada. 
This is not some ploy to get money. This is to get the truth out there and what the suffering that they did. And now they're reliving that pain because of this. We can't have a community that hands out hate literature and expect people to listen to us and take us seriously. We're not going to support that. And as a result, that's why the Taco Diné Nation has taken the step of stepping away from working with City Council until this issue is resolved in some fashion or another. To deny what has happened, we have a whole room full of elders and survivors here. They could go on all night and tell you what they went through. It hurts them that much that they would relive that just to let you know so that you'd have a better understanding of what happened and to see that being denied and disgraced by people that just don't believe in the facts. We've all seen the end results of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's final report. This happened. It's not going away and we have to learn from this. And we got to learn that we can't have hate, uh, have hate spread through the community and when it hurts. It not only hurts the elders, it hurts their grandchildren because the grandchildren see the pain on their grandma's face. And like, why are you sad, grandma? Well, the truth is it's a really sad story. We can't forget it, but we can't exploit it and we cannot deny that it happened. So we only see one step moving forward, is that we can no longer work with this bear and we will not work with the city of Quinnell until that issue has been resolved at some level. And I'm, it's unfortunate because we've done a lot of great works. We just co-hosted the Winter Games. That was a big pat on the back for all of us. We did a great thing there working together. We brought this province together. There's kids up there that didn't even know what Bannock was. Now they have a little, little idea of what our life is like. <laughs> and that one small little victory, that just kind of says it all. But working together and working towards something that is good, how it can benefit everyone. Them kids are never gonna forget that. And the parents and stuff, the older ones are gonna know that. It was the First Nation and the city working together that made this happen. Even though some events weren't held, it was a really great game and uh, we really enjoyed it. We enjoy working with the city. The Lataco Diné Park was a big achievement for us and one we're very proud of. We have a lot of other projects that we want to advance too, but we need to know that we're working with respectful people and respect in a relationship comes with trust. And when that trust is gone, it's really hard to get it back. And that is the sad part here. So we urge that we all work together and denounce racism and denialism as a collective. And that's uh, my hope for tonight is that we start towards that healing journey and not put up with this sort of denialism. We will not, just as you guys in your own homes, will not allow racism or hate to exist there. And it shouldn't exist in this floor either. It doesn't exist in our office. And we probably more than you guys have a lot more reasons to hate people than most people. <laughs> So we don't do that, that's not a solution. Working together and building a relationship is the solution here. And that is impossible to do when there's denialism and racism at the table. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Council like to respond to the comment. Councilor Rudenberg. Thank you. Um, so Chief LeBron, I know that this is an extremely hard evening for yourself and for your community, as well as our surrounding communities. So thank you for having that strength to be able to come forward and speak tonight. I really do hope that we can meet, make something happen here that brings that, that trust back to our working relationship with the council and with your community. What that looks like, I don't know yet. 
but um, I hope that we can get to that point because we do have a, we have had a very good re relationship on so many different fronts um, and we need to get back to that. So thank you very much to you and to all of the elders who have come here who are willing to share their stories. That's not an easy thing to even say that they want to do and we recognize that. So thank you very much for that. Sorry, Scott, I missed you. It's okay, Mr. Chair, thank you. I too would like to thank you, Chief, for coming forward and then speaking to us today, words of wisdom. And I, we have done great things. We had a chat earlier and, and I, I don't want to lose that. It's so important. You're our, our biggest partners and um, I'm gonna try and do everything we can to repair this situation and keep us moving forward. Thank you to everyone for coming out tonight. I'm sorry that you have to relive the pain. It's unimaginable to me and I just, I don't understand the, where the hate comes from, but I, I'm hoping we can get over this. Thank you. You're up, thanks. I just wanted to comment. I'm very uh, disappointed that we're still having to deal with this in 2024. I'm a, a second generation survivor. My mother, my aunties, all of my community members in that generation attended residential school. And some of them have died without healing, without talking about it. And in the last three years, we've started that healing journey. And some of them are actually starting to heal. And every time something like this comes up, it just brings us back down again and having to start over. And that's what people don't understand, is that when we're in our communities and we're trying to heal with our people, and then having something like this happen, it breaks the trust. So the relationship between the city and NASCO, like all relationships, is based on trust. We don't trust very often. We haven't had, had a good history to trust anybody. And the mayor has broken the trust with all First Nations, I believe. We should not be having to prove that residential schools hurt our people. We should be working together on reconciliation and healing. While we as the Nazca First Nation, we don't have the confidence in the mayor, we hope that the council will commit to continue working with us on reconciliation and the partnerships that we were working on together. And I just believe that our community deserves better. Us as people, our elders, we deserve better than to having to come here to, to prove that we went, our people went to residential schools, to prove that we were hurt, that we were broken. We deserve better. Thank you. Chief Stump. Are there any other chiefs who'd like to come forward? Push the, push the button. Charlene Bellew and Squixt. I just said my traditional name in my Sukwip language, Eagle Star Woman. I attended St. Joseph's Mission for four years. I attended St. Joseph's Mission during the time that Bishop O'Connor was sexually abusing girls and forcing our children to be given away. 
My family attended residential school. My uncle committed suicide there in 1920. I should have brought the book. So if you want to read the truth, Victims of Benevolence, authored by Dr. Elizabeth Furness, researched what happened to our children and documented in detail how they died. There was a nun that was looking after the children that gave a detailed account of how my uncle died because he was not considered Catholic, suicide is not Catholic, they buried him somewhere on St. Joseph's Mission grounds. So I'm part of an investigative team at St. Joseph's Mission, trying to find not only my uncle, but several other children that were at times taken by other children to bury. The documents that we've recovered about my uncle's suicide and burial come from your provincial archives. They come from your federal offices that have withheld these records for years. The stories are being told and shared by our elders in what they remember about grandpa, uncle, and so many others. I am grateful to be working with the Williams Lake First Nation, where the mayor and the council embrace reconciliation to the full extent. They stand with us at funerals. They stand with us when there are ceremonies that are happening at the St. Joseph's Mission grounds. And they hold our elders, and they feed our elders, and they take care of our elders. We're very proud of that relationship, and we need to continue that. I also do work with the other 21 institutions across the province, 18 residential schools, and three Indian hospitals that are doing the same work looking for these missing children that never came home. Each and every one of those projects are strong. Natle is here today. They're very strong in their commitment to find their missing children. We have the province standing with us and have provided some level of funding for the work that needs to be done. We have the support, limited support of the federal government. On the weekend, we heard from the Archbishop willing to open Catholic records. We now need them to stand up with us in the denialism. They need to be able to stand up and say, yes, we ran those institutions. Yes, we lost your children. Yes, they never went home. And this is where we buried them. I look forward to them finding my uncle bringing him home, to be able to bury him with a level of respect that he should have had as a child. He committed suicide because they were hanging them on wooden poles and lashing them until they passed out. Who wants to live like that as a child? Our people have hurt for generations. I've been doing this work for 30 years. I'm grateful for the guidance of our ancestors that told us we would go through this deep, dark period in our lives and that our people will be stronger for what we've been through. Damn right I'm strong. And I want you to be strong too. I want you to be able to listen and understand. I want you to be out there when we're looking for our children. I want you to be there to pray for forgiveness that this is what has happened to our children. 
I admire all of the elders, the survivors that are here. Many of them I went to school with. It's good to see them when I see them. But I don't want you to say that this didn't happen because I'm living proof. My uncle was there, he committed suicide. I look forward to, to finding him and bringing him home. So again, thank you for, for allowing me to say a few words and if there is learning in all of this for you, reach out to other mayors, reach out to other councils, reach out to other regional districts, what it is they're doing to be able to know and understand Take time to go out to Nazco Kleskas and to the communities. Have a sweat lodge with them. Dance with them. Have coffee. Have bannock. Listen, learn, and understand. Embrace what could be and needs to be a stronger relationship between all of us. Again, so thank you for allowing me time. Kuk Shem. Thank you. It's um, a pleasure to be sitting here and, and to be able to speak on behalf of some of my community members. I'm really in support of my, my nations here and what we're doing and trying to educate and trying to understand why why are we still here? Why are we still doing this? It's such a painful thing, as you heard. Thank you, Chief Charlene, for sharing everything with us today. I just want to ask you the questions. You know, when you, when you sit down today or sometime tonight, and you sit at the kitchen table and you're talking to your families, what are you talking about? All those things that you speak about and you live in your life day to day, it is heard by the children, it's heard by the, your families, and it's filtered out. So whether you support or don't support your wife in, in giving out the books, you, you still sit at those same tables, you're still sitting there with your families, and you're still educating each other in a negative way. It still goes out to our children, still goes out to the schools. We have a hard enough time as it is dealing with all the traumas that we had and now having tried to heal through our traumas for our children and having to keep doing this over and over again. I pray for some reconciliation and that we'll be able to understand and to come out, and to, like what Char Chief Charlene said, come out to our communities. Come and see how beautiful our people are. Come and see how generous we are. Come and see how much fun we have, and that we are so strong, and that we are not going anywhere. We will always be here. As long as the rivers flow, we will be here. And we're not going anywhere. Our ancestors, their bloods has been on this land for thousands and thousands of years and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I really have this, really appreciate the time to be able to educate a little bit and I hope that our children never have to go through this again and I hope that our children will, will be able to take this time to know and to be proud, to be proud of who they are, the struggle to find, you know, to find the, the equality nowadays is, you know, it shouldn't have to happen that way. So on behalf of my elders and, and all of our survivors here and of our nations, we are here supporting. And we do ask that you step down. You know, we, we ask that we step down and so that we can, so we can move on or at least educate more. So with that, I just I want to say Shania, I hope everybody is okay and that our elders will be okay today and that everybody takes care of each other as we always have and we always will. Thank you.
Hadi. And Leigh Frank Bushy Jr. Betty Squinas. Those are my parents. My dad was a chief for 25 years. <coughs> he was also a hereditary chief. <coughs> he went to residential school and so did my mother. My aunts and uncles. Because of the residential school, I didn't learn my language. I didn't know my culture until I got older. It's very tough to hear this book being passed out to everyone, or being published. Things like that, like the elected chiefs here spoke about is, it's wrecking our community, stuff like that. It ruined a perfectly good relationship between two nations. Whether you like it or not, these are many nations coming together and that one book ruined the relationship. It makes me very angry. It made a lot of my elders angry. A lot of the ones that went to residential school were angry. I grew up in the city of Quinnell. I know the history of the city of Quinnell. Many of you, or a few of you, aren't originally from Quinnell and probably don't even know the history. My dad made sure that I knew the history and that's what he carried out to all of my siblings and myself, is that we know the history. Lataco Dene used to be the biggest tribe in the area, the biggest village. We had over 30,000 people in our village pre-contact. We had pit houses and villages downtown Quinell along the riverbank. <coughs> All up in Johnson Sub, Carson Sub, there's pit houses. Those were all plowed into the river so that the city of Quinell can exist as a stopping place to Barkerville. That is our history we have together. Out of that 30,000 people in the village, there was less than 200 left and those 200 barely survived till now. That is our history between Quinell and Lataco Dene. That's a tough history. And we were working together with the city on many projects, trying to mend that relationship between the two nations, and this one act ruined it all. It hurt a lot of people. It hurt my children. It hurt a, a lot of people. So I stand behind the elected leadership and not working with the city of Quinell. Before this, I was elected chief as well. Mm -hmm. I've tried to work projects with the city, and it was very tough. There were a lot of council members on the city of Quinell that wouldn't work with us when I was elected chief. There was a lot of city council this, councils that wouldn't work with my father when he was chief of Lataco and that was all pure racism. I'm glad to see that we have indigenous representation at your table and you hold on to that because our people went through a lot and we hold a lot of knowledge and we hold a lot of wisdom. 
So it's up to you guys to prove yourselves to our nations, to prove that you're worthy to come back to the table. I know some of you, I know some of you since I was young. And I know that our nations may be able to work together again, but that's going to take a long time because it took that long for us to work together now. 150 years. So you guys have a lot of work to do. It's not up to us anymore. We reached out. Our people has always reached out to other nations to help them. We helped out the Chinese miners. Our people, the Latako Dene people, helped out the Chinese miners. They couldn't survive through the winters here. We showed them how to live through the winters here, out in Barkerville. That's what our people did. That's our history. We helped. We helped the first settlers survive. We helped Latako Dene every year when the salmon came up the river, all the other nations came because they wanted that salmon. And we gave them spots along the riverbank there, designated spots for each nation to set up camp and fish as much as they can so they can feed their families. We are a help helpful nation. That's what we are. But you guys, not you guys all, but the mayor himself, by promoting this book, is ruining that and ruined that relationship. So you guys have a lot to do. And like the other chief said, come to our sweats. Come to our ceremonies. Heal yourself. Prove yourself to us. And then maybe our nations can do business again. Oh, thank you. At this time, and thank you for, thank you very much. At this time, we will invite other individuals to come. Oh, I'm sorry, there's one more chief, I apologize. I came from Nadli. My name is Chenny. I was given the name Martin, Martin Louis, because of the Christianity. Chenny is who I live by. The Uncanny people are a great nation of people. Quenal, all the way to El Gacho, north to Stewart Lake. Mm -hmm. This is our land. And you are all doing business on this land. And we're looking for respect. That's what we live by. We live by truth. We live by trust, generosity, and compassion. That's what our people do. I never heard anything of it like that come out today. And you, I don't know if you know who we are, or what we do, or why we live the way we do. 
my grandpa always told me, when you speak, don't speak from here. You hurt people. You speak from here. That way you'll know what goes on in life. Obviously, you didn't do that. And we live, we live by protecting everything that's out there. Everything. You talk about reconciliation, the only reason reconciliation is there is because we own the land. By the court of law of Canada and BC, we own the land. They can't take us to court anymore, we'll keep winning. So they have to reconcile somehow. And that's what this is about. If you all know who we are as people, we don't need to be sitting here doing this. You don't know what our people went through because of racism, because of the land and the resources that's out there. They came and gave us the Indian Act to live by. And we did that faithfully because the residential school was supposed to give us education to do what we have to do out on the territory. <clears throat> but they didn't do that. They abused physically, mentally, sexually, verbally our people. And we're probably the third generation of people that is living through this thing here, the residential school. One was right in Natle. Few kilometers away, maybe 10 kilometers, our people go there and never came home. Been abused in every type of abuse you can find. And because of, uh, I have nothing against religion, because of religion and the belief that we have as young Kadene people, it's of the spirit. And that's why we try to protect everything out there. That spirit you I talk about is the same thing that comes into your head. Same thing that comes in, you make sure it comes out properly. We came a long way as people, suffered a lot as people. And I woke up one morning and my daughter was showing me this thing about what's going on over here and I was thinking, what the hell? I thought we were just about getting to a point where we're going to start talking, really having a good conversation about the resources. And it all went away because somebody didn't use this thing. They use this of what they think they know. What you know is right here. We didn't, when Europeans came, we didn't chase them out. We invited them. We had to learn. And they took advantage of it. They took advantage of us, of our generosity, of our kindness, of our compassion and trust and use that to destroy our people. Okay. 
And if you're a man, you would just step down. And learn, learn about our ways. Learn about our ways and why we do what we do. We're born to protect everything that's out there. Every, everything. You think we're troublemakers? We're not. We look into the future for our kids. That's where we look. We don't look at, oh, we're gonna get a lot of money tomorrow, we better do this right now. We don't do that. We make sure our kids are safe in the future. And that's what you guys should do too. The more people, you can people that's in the council here, it'll go, it'll go further, way further than just, you have to understand who we are as young Kadane. We're people of the earth. I'd like to thank you. I'm so sorry that you had to go through this in life. But just imagine what we had to go through in life. This is only two weeks for you. Our kids got raised in this situation. <clears throat> and I hope you guys sit down and make a right decision about what you're gonna do to move forward because every resource out there belongs to us by the Court of Canada, it says that. So that's why reconciliation is here. How oh, it's, uh, it's not child, yeah. Rainuski Nata Uten, Dai Blasten, Tatya Skatkan, Sita Residential School Jewesia, Katangia Skat Etsasta, CNA was Sita Sita Suhat Kat, Sa Isha Gaksali. It's our out here Tas Nai Tas Nai Tas Nai Gan Tagaldi Skondla Yaskat Sukak Sitja Sti Tasayi. One of you want to translate, please? My name is Roy Nuski. I'm, I work with uh, Natle Waten as a band council. I was at the residential school for eight years, and like I said, that everything above happened. Sure, I got this trap. Sure, I got. So I, that's why I got hearing it on both sides because of that. Speaking my language. One hurts, we all hurt. Edwin J. the Bay, not question. Even though I still move, move forward, see that healing my heart. Not very easy. Not very easy to forgive. Took me the longest years, 20 years of my life in Skid Row. Cover up the pain. Alcohol, cover up the pain, shooting up. But 75, 1975, the help of cowards and elders, this is where I move forward. Water ceremony, get rid of all the negative stuff from residential school. And since that time, honestly, I respect the RCMP for bringing me to Okala Prison Farm. You know them people, they're so nice to me. They open a door for you. When you go inside, they close the door for you. I never get a strap. 
that was the respect I got from them. And uh, I had to fill paper out. Wow, six weeks boot camp, Campbell River. I learned how to respect myself. I learned how to dress myself, not like when I was in Skid Row. And all that stuff I did was covering up the pain of residential school. And it's not easy to let go. Forgiveness is the hardest thing for me to go through. But now I respect RCMP. I respect the priests. One of them is in Vancouver, got old with me, but he ended up in old people's home. Maybe he's got room there for me, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about it, del Nas Quatsaten. I'm very happy we got all different communities behind me. As as one, we're stronger to move forward. The best night, Charlie. Yeah, I thank you. Sit down, but no. My name is um, Brian Paul. No relation to that man. <laughs> I'm an elder. I'm an elder from the Taco Dene Nation. I'm a survivor from St. Joseph Mission School. In that book, what they wrote. Whoever wrote that book. They worked in residential school with us. They didn't know what we went through. But I did. How they treated us. They beat us. Sexually abused us. Took our language away, our spirituality. Now I got that back. I got my spirituality back. I do sweat lodges. Like the chief said, you should all come to the sweat. And experience it with us. So we can work together. Not turn our backs on each other. That book is just a bunch of lies. I was trying to read it, and I couldn't read it. Tears started coming down my eyes. It hurt me. Hurt me right here. So I threw that book down. And I was thinking, I should bring that book here. I have it outside there. Now I'm going to burn that book Woo! right in front of you. You don't give our children that book. I'm trying to get the children to uh, be against us. It's not the way. As First Nations people, we tell the truth. We don't lie. That's what that book is, is a lie. We always told the truth, no matter what. So Ron, do us a big favor and step down. Ho -ho. We're going to open up the mic to others who'd like to come up and say a comment or a question. I'll remind everyone who remains in the gallery, excuse me, be respectful. 
<laughs> let, let those that are speaking say what they need to say. And remember that there's many behind you that want to speak, so please keep your comments brief to the point. If there's a question, I will seek help on this uh, horseshoe here who can help answer the question. Um, and as, as I stated earlier, when you come to sit down, please state your name and the community you come from. Hi, my name is Pat Morton, and I'm from Quinnell. Show some respect. I understand. I understand many of you wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for me. So first of all, no. First of all, I'd like to say I'm sorry. You're here under. I'll say I'm sorry you're here due to the actions of this council. I'm sorry if my actions sharing the book have upset you. But first of all, I have to say, and I'd like, to, I'd like you to listen to me. I listen to you, so you please listen to me. First of all, I have to say I'm hurt that I've been put in this position. One that could have been diffused. You put your stuff there. Yeah. I'm asking you to listen. I believe in love, not hate. And what you are portraying Point of order, Mr. Chair. It's not love. As you mentioned, it should be brief. There should be a question or for clarity. This is not Excuse to be a speech me? led I'm, by Ms. I'm Mrs. Speaking Morton. I'm like everyone else. I did not write the book, Grave Error. It was published in December of 2023, and I ordered it from Point Amazon of order. January. We know about the book. What is your question? Yes, I didn't. You guys didn't Point of order, uh, I am Chair. I'm asking a question. I please haven't please even come had to time the to. I did ask Connie Golay if she would like to give me an, uh, an opinion on the book, and she agreed. Point of order, Mr. Chair. There is no question here. There weren't questions either before. Leave it alone. The chiefs were allowed to have a conversation. They were speaking for their whole nations. Okay, you've been told clearly that you can come up here and ask for a point of clarity or a question. I don't believe Not I was told that. I figured this was going to be Mr. Chair, please. Pat, we need, we need a question or a comment. Okay, so my question, Mr. Goulet, why did you take my innocent Point of order, to your Chair, mind? all of the questions must come through you and you can decide where they are going. Let's, let's go. Mis, Mr. Chair, could you please have con, uh, constable, uh, sorry, I'm really rattled. <laughs> Councilor Goulet to explain why he took the book that I gave his mother for an opinion, that I asked for an opinion of his mother and made Please it Please let the public. question be answered, asked. Well, let her say what she has to say too. You listen to everybody else. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, if we cannot conduct this in an orderly fashion, we will conclude this. I believe that's what they wrote on, the, on Facebook that they intended to do, so we couldn't speak. Please, Ms. Morton, please ask your question. I wonder why, Councillor, can you explain to me why Councillor Rudenberg, as the Indigenous Relations Representative, didn't come and talk to me about her concerns when rumours were spreading in this community? <laughs> Question to Councillor Rudenberg. I have no need to have uh, your opinion when I work with First Nations. Excuse me, I would like to ask the question why the Indigenous Relations uh, representative for the city did not feel compelled to come and talk to me when the rumors were spread about the community about what I've done. Thank you. So my business is with the mayor, not with you, and it's his actions that we are condoning, not we are condemning tonight. Uh, Don't care about the book, Pat Morton. What we care about is the fact that you have no respect for your husband as the mayor of the city, and here's the here is the fallout yeah. to your actions in the community. I w I'm asking among you. How many questions do we allow? State. Point of order, Chair. How many questions do this we allow? This will be the final question, Ms. Morton. Start 
I have to find a, a question for you. Are you? are you aware that I've been to, um, that I lived in Puerto Bernie near a residential school and that I attended that residential school um, at a dance? Point of order again, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. If you want to talk about your good opportunities or what your people have done in residential school, great, take it outside. That has nothing to do with what's going on in this okay, chamber okay. right now with the mayor. Thank you, Ms. Martin, for your... State your name and your community where you're from. So, just for a point of clarification, how many questions are we allowed to ask? One. It's supposed to be a comment or a question. Okay. Uh, my name is Francis Widowson. I'm uh, I'm a professor. Uh, I was a professor at Mount Royal University, and I am a senior fellow with the Frontier Center for Public Policy and a board please member let, for the society. Please let the individual ask the question or state the comment. Thank you. Uh, I, and I'm a board member for the Society for Academic Freedom and Scholarship. My question is about the attachment or the item concerning the press release, the news uh, release from the British Columbia Assembly of First Nations. On this press release, it states that uh, the Tekemlitz Shepekwik, uh, the Kamloops Band, first brought forward evidence of unmarked graves at the site of the former Kamloops Indian Residential School in 2021. Point of order. If she has a question to that organization, she needs to... No, I have, an, I, have a, I have a question about this being read into the record here. Does the council concern itself with misinformation? Is it opposed to misinformation being spread and entered into the record? If so, does it agree that this is misinformation because there is no evidence of uh, unmarked graves at the Kamloops Indian Residential School? So okay. do you agree that order, misinformation we will should be spread your in your Please. records? Question. Councilor Rudenberg, would you like to take a stab so at that? So this is a question coming from a tenured professor who was actually fired from her role in the Departments of Economics, Justice and Policy Study at Mount Royal in Calgary following allegations of workplace harassment and intimidation. This was during con controversy. This happened around comments she made on how residential schools had positive educational benefits and when she questioned if the abuse that occurred actually equates to cultural genocide as described in the Truth and Reconciliation Act. You really have no place here asking your questions. We really don't want to hear from you. You didn't answer my question. You didn't answer my question. Do you think that the council should be spreading misinformation? Point of order, Mr. Chair. Her opinion in this in this chambers does not count. She's asking us to comment on something that comes from qualified individuals that dealt with this, that lived through this. Ma'am, you are not welcome here. These things are just out of control. So you're not going to answer my question. So you're not going to answer the question. Is that correct? Okay. The question. Do you agree that the council should spread misinformation? There is no evidence of unmarked graves at the Kamloops Indian Residential School. And we need to have the report released from the Bullio report. Mr. Chair, and we there need is to no have question here. I ask that we just stop her from are needed talking. to make that determination. Answer my question. Do you agree that you should spread misinformation? There is no answer to this question. Mr. Chair, Peace. I'd move for adjournment. Peace. I tend to agree. However, looks like it's quieting down. Is there any other questions coming from the gallery?
not seeing any further questions from the gallery, I will call for an adjournment. Um, before we do that, uh, Mr. Chair, I have a motion I'd like to put on the floor, please. Yes, I'll allow it. So, um, I actually just have a question on the democratic process. If Mr. Paul does not choose to step down in his uh, of his own accord, would the democratic process not then take this to an election? Uh, and why I'm at why I'm asking that is because the democratic process already proved that the democracy chose Mr. Paul, Mr. Runge, Mrs. Rudenberg, Mitch, Deborah, and I'm asking that question if the democratic process needs to take this to an election. There's a lot of charged emotions. We've been told that you're asking him to step down, but does it not have to go to an election? If it has to go to an election, we still have two years on the terms. So are we then going to go to an election, a sweeping election and everybody goes, or would you go to an election only asking for a new mayor? What would be the Democrat? Because if, if he's forced to step down, then that would negate anybody that voted him in. That would negate their Democratic right to have voted. I, th I think I get where your question All is of you. going. Do you, and do you understand what I'm the saying? The city manager has uh, yeah, opted to fine. answer that. Thank you, Mr. Acting Chair. That was a long-winded question. I hope I got the most of it there, Cindy. So the Democratic process with the community charter is such that we cannot require the mayor to step down. A unanimous vote of council would not require the mayor to step down. If the mayor was to step down, it would be from his own choice due to his own conscience. The most that the city could do, given the horrific fallout from his actions, would be to require a censure motion or other sanctions that are possible under the community charter. So that is an option what council still has. Okay. okay. But but there's not an election unless he unless Mayor Paul chooses to step down. It's his okay. right to do that. Okay, thank you. No, I wanted that just asked for the process, how that process would work as a taxpayer. I don't want two elections that are gonna cost me as a taxpayer. Hello, my name is Karen Paul and I'm from Tluskis. I just have one question for the mayor. What color is your blood? My blood is red, what about yours? We all bleed the same color. We all bleed the same color, no matter what colors our skin is, we still bleed the red. What color is your blood? Tell me that, what color is your blood? We're not different. We're all human beings here. We all have we all have found feelings in our heart. We don't need to relive this. What color is your blood? Tell me. Red. Well, mine too is red. Prove it. You want me to prove it? Where's your pen? Oh I'll prove it to you. My color is red too. You're no different, just our skin is different. Who said that? I have two comments from city councillors. Uh, Councillor McKelvey and then Councillor Rudenberg. I prepared this um, before I realized what was going to happen here tonight in its entirety. I want to thank all of you for coming tonight and sharing your stories with us and it truly touched my heart, I have to tell you. Um, we have worked earnestly with the Indigenous community supporting reconciliation and healing the past. We still have a long way to go 
the events leading up to tonight are a devastating example. It breaks my heart to see the division that is occurring in our community. We can do better and we are better. Council have received many messages, mostly emails from both sides of this issue, some helpful, some not so helpful, some respectful, and some were absolutely disgusting. You cannot negate the bad with any good that happened in the Indian residential schools, plain and simple. The media, for the most part, has become an untrustworthy instrument. We may cherry pick what we choose to believe in print to support our views, or we can listen to the people who lived the experiences that they share. I've heard a lot of, well, people need to hear the truth. Well, the truth is fluid. What is truth for one may not be truth for another. Facts and statistics for one are not facts and statistics for another. Circumstances varied greatly in the residential Indian schools. My hope is that we can move forward with love, empathy, respect, and understanding. These past few weeks have become a valuable learning experience. I'm looking forward to hearing more stories from our Aboriginal communities who are comfortable to share as we gather together in the near future. Thank you for this opportunity to share my thoughts and thank you for sharing yours. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Um, it was, it was, as somebody on this side of the table, it was hard to listen to these elders bring their stories forward. So I cannot even begin to imagine what is going through their heart and their head right now. Um, as Chief Stump said, they deserve better. And, um, you know, they don't trust often. And whatever trust we've built has been blown out of the water. And um, I received a text tonight saying, we can do the hard things. And so having said that, I would like to put a motion on the floor that requests staff to prepare a report on the matter of censure of the mayor. Uh, in it, please note what censure means for council and what sanctions council can levy against the mayor and to bring it forward to an open public meeting as soon as possible, even if it means a special meeting is needed. I'd second that motion. Discussion on the motion. Well, I can speak to the motion. Thank you. Doing a lot of speaking tonight. Um, because of the previous disclosure of the mayor lying to council and to the community about his involvement in the attempted distribution of the book that his wife, Pat Morton, has circulated in the community, our community no longer has faith in the office of the mayor. And council needs to provide a space where we can regain the trust of our First Nations, our community as a whole, and do the work that we were elected to do instead of being sidelined by this stuff. Any other questions or any other comments, questions on the motion? Is the motion clear to everybody? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Wow. Sorry, I need to show my hands properly, please. Opposed to the motion? <laughs> the motion carries. <laughs> Is that clear, Rhea, on the uh, motion and what it entails? Okay. Can I say so? We're still welcoming comments from the gallery. Please state your name, your community, and limit your uh, comp to one comment, one question. Thank you. Just a comment. <clears throat> My name is Bev Halishak. I'm from Quinell. I have uh, one of my roles is to teach young people and to help them come to a point in their conversations and in their assessments uh, where they can think critically. So I take some issue with Councillor McKelvey, friendly, friendly issue. 
there are some things that are objectively true. You, you cannot say, I think this is true and you think that's true. There are things in this life that are objectively true. And as a mother, as a grandmother, as a human being, I heard the truth tonight. And I want to say that without truth, there can be no reconciliation. And we must all commit to protecting and valuing what is true. If we don't do that, we cannot be reconciled to each other. We cannot trust each other. There are things in life that are objectively true. Thank you. Thank you, Bev. Hello, my name is Jamie DeLibo Cruz. I've been a resident of BC my or Quinnell my entire life, 43 years. Um, I've worked uh, with the Native Friendship Center for seven years and I also work with students. And I've worked as a youth outreach worker within our community. The time that we have taken away the energy and the resources that we have taken away just because we've had to deal with this book from the res from indigenous communities who are suffering gravely the fentanyl crisis is killing our indigenous young people at an alarming rate we do not have time for this we need to put our energy where it needs to be it needs to be in helping and supporting our community to get better. Not this denial, not this division. It's a shameful, shameful experience. And I just have one question. Ron Paul, will you just resign? It's enough. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the gallery? Last call, are there any other questions from the gallery? Or comments? Seeing none, uh, we'll move to... We got one here. My name is Katrine McLean. I live in Quinnell. I want to know how many of these counselors know the five acts of genocide? In 1948, the Genocide Convention happened. They discussed five acts. In 1950, they acknowledged them. The first one is murdering a group. The second one is taking a group away from their culture. I'm paraphrasing here, I'm really tired. Third one is taking children. Fourth one is giving women abortion and not allowing them to have kids. And I can't remember, I'm so sorry, I just can't remember the fifth one because like I said, I'm very tired. Since you didn't have the answer, I thought I'd give it to you because I am the daughter of a person that had escaped, my parents escaped from the Stalin regime. My uncle was executed and my grandfather died in the gulags. So what these people say here, I keep getting sympathy, but they're not. And that's a shame. Thank you. Okay, here's the third time. Are there any other 
questions from the gallery or comment? Yes. I would like to know what Ron Paul himself has to say. Would you like to respond, Mayor Paul? Uh, yes, thank you. I didn't come down here today to speak. God gave me two ears and one mouth, and I came here to listen. And I thought you were our leader. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Could, we, could you use the microphone, please? I can't hear you. I thought you were a mayor, a leader. Step up and say something. Well, are you, going, are you going to give me that chance, please? You betcha. We've given you a chance all night. You haven't as, said a as thing. As I said, I came here to listen. I did Why? not. Why did you not come here to speak with the rest of us? Why? I, I don't understand what you're, what you're driving at. I, maybe I came down here to listen. I don't think anybody wants to hear me go on. I mean, I've got two pages of notes, and I'm, I'm, not, going to, I'm not going to get into that. Okay. I, I think at the end of the day, um, and I wanted to thank the chiefs. Uh, I thought there were only four, but it seemed like there were, there were more than that. Um, I wanted to thank, and I will take this opportunity, uh, to thank them for their comments, their stories, and above all, their honesty. Uh, what they have shared with us and with me is from their hearts. That was abundantly obvious, and I thank them for that. Their words must be, absolutely must be preserved for sharing with others uh, on the pathway to reconciliation. I don't intend on going anywhere. I intend on working my heart out to, to further the objectives of reconciliation. Not and good Not good enough. Why haven't you started today? Today was your chance to get started, and you never said a word. You well, still are not saying a word. I, I wanted to hold my response until the end of the meeting in order to give everyone an opportunity to be heard. And they have been heard. You've heard the chair. Uh, call for further uh, people to come from the gallery, and I'm waiting for that moment I'm here. To, to have the floor. And, and um, I'm not going to go into, like I said, five page or three pages of notes. I don't think you want to hear all. I mean, at the last meeting. Maybe an apology might be a good start. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey. An apology. I, I, I am guilty by association. No, 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 that's not true. Well, I, I will express regret that all of this has happened. And I mean, I've been here at City Hall, Town yeah. Hall for 52 years. And you got and, found and I, out finally. You and finally and you, may, you may out. think that that is enough, uh, but the next election is on Saturday, October 17, 2026. And I, 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 I'm, in, I'm in convinced that I want to stay and work through to that date. I don't think that I can be um, removed from office unless I commit an indictable offense. And I have, I have not committed an indictable offense. Pretty darn close. What happened here today? In your opinion. And I, you were asked to step down. Or I believe the mayor has answered the question, ma'am. So I guess you're. Are there any other questions, concern from the gallery? Uh, my name is Mateo Rojas. I am from Quinell, and my heart is with Luska's Diné Nation. Ron, my question is for you. I like you, have been given two ears and a mouth by God to listen. And I was here to listen until you brought God into it. Now you say you're a man of God. Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. Or at least I consider myself such. And you say that you're guilty by association or whatever you have done or regardless. We could go on and on about the details, but you can see that people have been hurt. 
you understand that as a man of your household, you have had a part in this. My question is, do you have an apology for these people? Hey. Hey. I, uh, yes, I do. I am sorry that it has come to this, and I will work my heart out to make repar reparations. Yes. I honestly mean that. In fact, tonight is probably the first time that we as a council have heard from our First Nations neighbors. Uh, and I think that, that we are long, long overdue uh, for having, in fact, I, I've got a recommendation here, and uh, I, I don't want to, this, this would be a recommendation that would come up at a future meeting, but last week, at council, we had three resolutions that were presented to us uh, by one of the councillors. Actually, to be honest, those resolutions were out of order because they were not, uh, according to the procedure by law, they were required to have been submitted in writing at least 24 hours before the meeting. I have decided not to challenge those three resolutions which were, which were passed, which I voted in favor of, all of them, um, because I want to see this, pr I, I don't want to go backwards, I want to go forwards. And um, one thing that I want, that I want to recommend with regard to the memorandum of understanding, which is right there on the wall, half of the signatures on that memorandum of understanding are from people that aren't even here anymore. Not only with on city council, but also on Lataco Dene Nation. And I will be recommending that immediately or as soon as possible, we arrange a ceremonial re-signing of that memorandum of understanding with all of the current councillors and all uh, here at this table and all of the current councillors at the Lataco Dene table so that the, the document is fresh and, leaf, and and a breathing document. And furthermore, I would be recommending that at the beginning of every four year term here at the City Council that we re-sign that declaration or that memorandum of understanding. And I do have other recommendations here that um, that I would like to discuss with council. I we just um, uh, well, Ron, you're a very hard man to understand, and we're looking for genuine repentance. And if that is true, then I do believe that the people that are standing behind me are good people. They are. That they are honest people and that they can find forgiveness in their hearts as they have for me many times when I've made mistakes. But it requires a genuine relationship. So come on out, find some bannock, find a sweat, and hopefully they can understand you. But other than that, that's all I have to say today. Well, thank you for that. I, I look forward to doing that. I honestly mean that from my heart. <laughs> I have to say, it's quite an honor to follow that young man, yes. what he did this spring. First, I'd like to thank you, councillors. Thank you. Just you your name, ma'am, and, and sorry. where you're from. Sorry, my name's Patty Colodi. I live in Quinnell. Thank you to the councillors for what you've done thus far. Mayor Paul, it, there are situations and times when we have to realize that things are bigger than us. This is not about you anymore. This is about our town. And a good leader might think about stepping back and letting the people who have made this effort thus far to fix it, let them continue to fix this. this is, it's, it's bigger than you. So I respectfully request that you consider stepping down and let these people who are proving themselves let them fix this. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Hello, my name is Raina Bear. I am a citizen of Quinell. I'm also a member of the accessibility committee that we sit on together. And I have to say that I join the requests for you to step down. If you honestly feel that you wish to have reconciliation from all of this, then the first thing you should notice is that they've requested for you to stand down. If you want to honor their requests 
and start reconciliation, then do this for them. They have asked of it. They have asked you of it. I don't understand why you think that there's something more that can be done on your terms instead of what they have put forth on their terms. That's the start. I hope that you can think past yourself and understand what these people have been through, continue to go through, and will go through because books like this are out there and it's not the only one. And it's going to continue to influence people, not just you, your wife, or this town. But you being a representative of this town gives it more credence for other people out there to believe. I'm ashamed to sit on the council with you if you continue to stay as mayor. I would hope that if you step down, that maybe that would give some respect to the people here that deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Julia Dilbo, Quinnell. Uh, Quinnell Pride Society President, um, Director on the Provincial Health Services Authority, uh, now past Director on the Lataco Quinnell BC Winter Games, which were an amazing feat. Um, I have first, I think, uh, a point of uh, clarity uh, to Mr. Paul, and I could have heard this wrong because there was a lot of amazing people out in outside the gallery when I heard it. Um, can you just clarify your statement about the anti-Soji or Soji books that you have referred to today? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, I am um, of the opinion that certain books in, in libraries um, in children's sections of libraries uh, should not be there, and I won't go any further than to say that. Because so, that, was, that was what this whole issue was about, was uh, Soji books uh, within reach of little kids in a, in a library. And that's my personal view. So about a, year, about a year ago, well, almost exactly a year ago, the little bear was poked and the pride community was poked and now you've poked the big bear. And in the statements, you all signed on to stomping out hate in our community and you have failed to do so. It's time to do the right thing and step aside and let those of you that are willing to do the right thing and continue to repair what has now been damaged that the community did, not you, to help bring Lataco and the community together because this is their community. Step aside. Thank you for that. Hello, uh, my name is Stacy Hanrahan Denis. I am born in Quinnell and I live here. My mother is from Miccosukee Cree First Nation in Alberta. My grandmother was a residential school survivor. I am a survivor of historical and generational trauma. And um, I would just like to start by saying, uh, just quoting something from a social media. Um, we live in a world where your kid cannot pretend to be an Indian, but a grown man can pre pretend to be a woman. This was posted by the mayor's wife on Facebook, January 30th, 2023. Having said that, I am also um, a director of the Quinnell Pride Society and within Indigenous culture, we hold our two-spirited people very high and highly regarded. Um, so your comments about Soji and your comments about this book that has been distributed has greatly harmed many people from many diversities. Um, I just want to say, this is just a comment that um, when an individual says they're sorry and they're not sorry, like what we witnessed, it is further damaging the victims of residential school because their stories and their experiences cannot be fully understood, appreciated, heard, 
or felt. You say you regret things, and you only said you're sorry when you were put under pressure. You should have apologized at that meeting immediately. I am very dismayed that you are the leader of Quenelle as being born and raised here. It is complete and utter embarrassment across this nation, across all of our First Nations. I would like to reiterate what Julia said and ask that you step down as mayor so someone can represent not just the Quinellians, our First Nation people or two-spirited people as well, with good faith, love and understanding. I don't think you have it inside of yourself to be able to be part of any reconciliation. Or, and your wife too. It's, it's, it's like guttural. Um, during the Truth and Reconciliation conferences, when they came up to the 94 calls to action, all the elders that had to recount their, their traumas and their abuses ended up, a lot of, per, high percentage of them committed suicide across Canada because the government didn't instill any uh, therapy or counseling or any support for them after they relived their traumas. So them reliving their trauma to you, specifically you, because you seem like you're the only one here who's not listening, their traumas are on your shoulders. What happens after this is on your shoulders. Do the right thing, step down, and let somebody else lead Quinnell with love and compassion. Thank you. Hi, hi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Sage Gordon, and I'm from Baker Creek. Uh, I wasn't going to speak, but I heard it mentioned that <laughs> those graves in the Kamloops and a lot of other graves don't exist. It was all made up. I'm sorry. I gr I'm not sorry. I grew up on the Skeechitson Band out of Savannah. Many of those that survived I called uncle, grandpa, auntie. They were family. I saw many suicides from that. Many alcohol deaths due to the traumas. Those graves are real. And not only that, there is graves spread out from everywhere, from those schools that will never be found. People want answers, people want closure, they need it. It's not easy to see, it's not easy to witness, but we're in it, we see it, we're, it's around us. We need to deal with it and continue, move forward. As men of faith, or even women of faith, those of us that are married, we're heads of our houses. We're responsible for what happens underneath us. Those in leadership here, we're responsible for what happens. Even with our families, it reflects in our leadership. We're responsible for that. We have to answer to that. The choice is, uh, is ours, and I pray that we all make uh, the right choice. And moving forward tonight, I would like also to pray that we make a big step forward in continuing the relationships with our neighbours, with our families on this, and step forward. If it takes us to make the first move, they've made the move here tonight. Now we need to move forward and do that for them and with them. Thank you. Thank you, Sage. Any other questions from the gallery?
Hi, my name is Shelby Coppin. You actually turn your mic off, miss. Oh, just kidding, I turned it off. Hi, my name is Shelby Coppin, uh, Quinnell, that's where I live. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, you've heard quite a lot from a lot of people, and I'm sure tonight you're very exhausted and you're ready to go home, I'm sure. Uh, I do have a question for you, though, however. You say that uh, you will not be stepping down, that you will be doing everything in your power to be able to move forward and to build reconciliation in our community, and I am looking for an answer because uh, majority of of the First Nations uh, communities have already said they don't want to work with you or they can't work with you as mayor. So I'm just wondering what, like in your mind, you have uh, up your sleeve to, I guess, build reconciliation with uh, a lot of nations that aren't willing to do that with you anymore because of the harm that has been done here. In answer to your question, I'm not a quitter and I am determined to give everything from my heart to see this thing go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I have apologized for the, for the situation mm -hmm. that this whole thing has put the community in, mm -hmm. and, I, and I mean that. But I'm not, I'm not going to walk away. I, mm -hmm. You know, I, I have something here, and I have three loves in Quinell. I love my wife. I love my friends and family, and I love Quinell. Quinell is in my heart, and I'm not about to abandon it. Right. I don't think. Not not without a lot of honest effort. Mm -hmm. Nobody so far that I've heard has asked you to quit. You have been asked to step down and decenter yourself because your extreme amount of privilege as a white Christian professing male, mayor of our town, you hold an extreme amount of privilege. No one's asked you to quit or give up. They've asked you to step down so that we can continue because you are not the man for this job. Thank you. Mic on, or do I have to press the button? Don't touch me. Enough, please. Excuse me. Yeah. Do I need to press the button, or is the mic? You're actually on. We just need your name and where you live. Sheila Anderson, and I'm from Quinell. I wear a variety of hats in this community. Um, some professional, some personal, in different organizations like the Amata Transition House and Northern Health, etc. Mr. Paul, what I would like to say is just a comment. When I teach my children how to apologize to others and be accountable for their behavior, I teach them first to name their behavior. I'm sorry that I did something that really did harm. And that's something that you know my children do fairly well. And then I teach them to try to put themselves in the shoes of the people that they have harmed by guessing what they might be feeling or trying to name their emotion. Finally, I teach my children to make meaningful repair based on their apology. I do not teach my children that we apologize for how things got this way without actually acknowledging and making an apology for the key behavior. What that is when we say to people, I am sorry that things have come to this, rather than I am sorry I have behaved in this way, is systemic gaslighting. And when politicians do that, it is particularly problematic, particularly in matters that involve reconciliation and truth with our Indigenous communities. Are there any further questions from the gallery or comments? Are there any other questions from the gallery or comment? And for the third time, are there any other questions or comments from the gallery? Good evening, everyone. My name is Dahlia. I'm originally from Hamilton, Ontario, and I have the privilege to live, work, and play in the traditional and unceded territory of the Lechaco, Diné, and Nazco First Nations. 
I'm a registered band member of Wequimacong First Nation. I am not here today to speak on behalf of my band. I'm here to speak from my own heart. I am the daughter of a 60 Scoop survivor. I'm the granddaughter of a sanatorium survivor, and I'm the great niece and cousin to residential school survivors. There was a healing walk that took place this past September in our community, and it moved a lot of people across the country. People from all over were watching. I saw some council members there. I didn't see all council members there. Mr. Ron Paul, Mayor Ron Paul, my question to you, you made a motion to be the co-Indigenous Relations representative the last time that you guys met in council, correct? Yes, that is correct. Can you name all of the bands from that healing walk from Kluskis all the way down to the first, to the mission, St. Joseph's mission? Can you name all of those bands, their chiefs and their council members? No, I cannot, but I can tell you that um, I recall making a good donation to that cause. In my tribe, I'm taught by my elders that we put our sacred tobacco in our hand and we offer it to the elders and we, we, we offer that first and ask to walk with them. And that is a respected protocol to making reconciliation happen with First Nations people and to hear their stories and to walk alongside them. And so for you to make that motion and not even know the council members or the chiefs or even the bands of this region, it's a disgrace. And I think that to have true reconciliation, this whole council needs to learn who the respected elders are who are the people from this land who are the knowledge keepers and storytellers? And so if you can't even make that a priority, when money's a priority and not the relationships with the people, how do you not expect people to ask you to step down? Please do the right thing and step down. I just want to reply to that. That, um, that I see this whole incident as being an opportunity to learn, to heal, and to work together towards reconciliation. I really think that this incident has spawned a whole new desire, a whole new interest in pursuing uh, reconciliation. And, and I apologize that I did not know the names of the chiefs and the, and the names of the bands. But I'm, I'm certainly willing to learn that. I mean, I did take an interest in it, and I actually don't recall even being invited to, to march in that or whatever in that procession. I would have loved to, to have done that had the opportunity presented itself, but I didn't know that I had that opportunity. You didn't see the wave of orange marching down the street with the vast police presence for days, weeks. They walked all the way down to Williams Lake and all the way back up. You, you didn't see that. I apologize, I did not see that. Thank you for your time, everyone. Are there any more questions or comments from the gallery? Hello, my name is Teresa Frappier and I work for School District 28. Um, this is for Ron Paul. What is reconciliation? Uh, reconciliation in, in my view is, is having an honest understanding of, um, of each of our uh, traditions, each of our um, goals, each of our histories. And, and working together as, as uh, partners. 
um, we at the city have numerous projects going on, that some that have been completed uh, under the leadership of Mayor Simpson, but others that are, uh, that are continuing. I see that as reconciliation. Uh, I guess in a nutshell, uh, reconciliation is understanding one another, respecting one another, and working together for the better, betterment of our respective communities. How are you going to reconcile when no one will work with you? I am going to do my best to create an environment where we can work together. At least I'm going to try. That means that you should step down then. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions from the gallery or comment? My name is Siobhan McKenzie and I grew up in Quinell, British Columbia. I was involved in civic politics in this community from the time I was 14 years old. I campaign managed a civic election at that time. I'm, my, 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 it's a comment, not a question. As a community member of Quinell, I don't live here anymore, but my family does. I grew up here. This is unacceptable that this is happening in our hometown. I know that local government politics doesn't do this. We work with First Nations people. We don't do this. We don't open up these wounds and treat people like that. My mother was a 60 scoop survivor. My grandmother was a residential school. And I have been affected by intergenerational trauma as a Caucasian child that was raised by First Nations people. And so I can speak from a very white privileged perspective as a white person who grew up in indigenous communities and the community of Quinell. This is a disgrace and I think my comment is that the mayor should step down. It's very disappointing. Are there any questions or comments from the gallery? Are there any further questions or comments from the gallery? And for the last time, are there any questions or comments from the gallery? Seeing none, we'll move forward with the agenda. There are no current changes that I'm aware of to the upcoming meeting schedule. There are no changes to committee appointments that I'm aware of. And I'm not aware of any announcements unless council would like to share of an announcement. Seeing none, I will ask for an adjournment. Councilor Elliott, Councilor Runge, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you everyone for coming tonight, thank you.